How much grow bed area should you have in relation to fish tank size? This is George from Placerville, California. The School of Aquaponics. So this is probably one of the most difficult questions to answer in aquaponics. And a lot of people have this question. They want to know uh, ratios and how many fish and things of that nature. And what happens is they hear a lot of um, a lot of ratios being thrown out and then they put it into practice and they find out that there's a lot more to it than the, the, the little standard ratios that have been put out there. And that has that stems from people primarily trying to downplay the um, difficulty of operating an aquaponic system. It's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, this is a thinking man's game here. That's what this is. What we're doing is we're substituting the physical labor that is required by gardening and uh, traditional type of farming for using our brain. That's what it is. So it's, uh, it's, you can't have them both. You can't have easy labor, which aquaponics is easy labor, but, and, and you can't have easy, uh, non mentally stimulating. It's going to have to have one of them. And aquaponics is probably the most uh, it's mentally challenging uh, farming practice out there. So this is not some just throw your fish in there, throw your feet in there and just let it do what it has to do. That's not the way it, that's not the way it works. That's not at least that's not the way it works with me. That's not what we're doing here. This is more. This is a there's a techniques and there's guidelines and there's n rules and principles that we must abide by when um, doing this practice. So the first thing we need to know is how many fish and how much these fish weigh. How many pounds of fish do we have inside of the system? And even in this uh, variable, there's still sub variables that have an effect on the um, output of the, the system as well. Like the size of the fish that we have, 10 pounds of mature fish is not the same as 10 pounds of fingerlings or fry. The smaller fish are going to produce more um, ammonia per body weight than the larger fish. And they're going to consume more feed per body weight than the larger fish as well. So these are sub um, variables that we need to consider um, in this equation. And also what we need to do is we need to find out what are we, what is the expected outcome for these fish? What are we trying to, ha what do we have these fish in here for? Are we trying to get optimal growth out of them so we can sell them? If so, we need to stock at a lower density. We need to stock at a lower density. If we're just trying to have them in there or even for breeding purposes, we need to stock at a lower density. If we want just nutrient supply um, and and we want them to be that we want to maximize the amount of space that we have then we can uh, do high density um, stocking so this is important when understanding how many gallons do we need so let's say for instance our, our circumstance let's say we want we want we want to grow these fish out so we can sell them so we want an optimal growing environment for these fish so in that case the lower density we're going to give them We'll say we'll give them for each pound, we'll give 10 gallons. So that means we need a hundred gallon system um, to support these fish in an optimal growing environment. And this is going to uh, vary depending on the type of fish, because even this is a variable, the type of fish we have, they require like tilapia for optimal growing conditions don't need 10 gallons uh, per pound. It needs a lot low, a lot less than that to be, um, to grow out of, um, in an optimal um condition. But for ease of understanding, we'll just stick with the uh, one pound per 10 gallons. So what else do we need? What else do we need to know? We need to know how much feed are we going to be supplying to the fish? This is the part of the equation when somebody's telling you a one to this ratio or a two to three ratio that all that is irrelevant because the amount of feed is what's going to determine how much output of nutrients you can supply to your system. It doesn't matter if we can have one pound of fish per one gallon of water. And if we're only putting in one gram of feed, guess what we're getting? We're only getting, the, uh, we're only, that, that one gram of feed is only gonna be converted to supply the rest of the nutrients to the system. And one gram of feed is not gonna supply two uh, grow beds of, uh, of plants. So the feed is the main missing um, variable inside of the equation of this one to whatever grow, grow bed ratio. So. We're going to say that we're going to be feeding our tilapia or feeding our fish 1.5% of, uh, of the body weight, 1.5%. That's how much we're going to be putting in. Now, what else do we need? Since we're putting in feed to our system now, what's going to happen? Ammonia is building up. That, that's going to become toxic. Nitrite is building up. That's going to become toxic. So we need a way, we need a way to uh, process that. So we need to know how much biological filtration we need 
to process the amount of feed, the 1.5% of the body weight that we're giving to this 10 pounds of tilapia or 10 pounds of fish in this 100 gallon uh, system. So we need to know how much biological filter uh, filtration we need. And we can go off of a standard metric uh, of a standard measurement of a minimum of 50 um, square feet of biological surface area per pound of fish. And this is going to be over the top. This is going to be more than what you need, but this is going to be, remember I told you there's variables in the amount of the size of the fish. 10 pounds of fingerlings is going to produce way more ammonia than 10, well, maybe not way more, but it's going to produce a significant amount more than 10 pounds of mature fish. So if we, we're going to oversize the biological filter, to, that's going to make up for any type of differentiation we have in, um, in the sizes of fish. So as long as we have 10 pounds of fish in there, we know we're going to be fine if we keep 50 um, square feet of uh, biological surface area per pound of fish, which gives us about somewhere um, 50 times 10, that's about uh, 500. 500 square feet of biological surface area to supply or to process the waste that has been produced by those fish. So you can see how the equation is getting put together. It's much more complex than just a, um, how many fish you have to how many grow bed grow beds you have. It's, it's way more complicated than that and more complex. This is the thinking man's game. What else do we need in this equation? We need to know the amount of dissolved oxygen inside of the um, system. Inside of the system, we need to have at least somewhere around three uh, milligrams per liter of oxygen to supply the system. And this and that won't if we're if we have a low stocking density, that's not going to be a problem. It, this comes into the, into the equation when we want to stock more densely. Now we need to worry about okay. Now we need to start checking um, dissolved oxygen levels and maybe even supplementing dissolved oxygen levels. Boom. So now we have all these things figured out. What else can we do now? Let's say that we have, say that the system, we have a cycle system now. What we can do is we can check nitrate levels, assuming that the system is already cycled. Um, this is just a hypothetical um, system analogy, uh, so we don't have to get too caught up on the exacts, but say we have, after we added all of our fish and everything, everything's running, we're feeding at the right schedule. Say we have now the system cycle and it's 200 parts per million of nitrates and we don't have any plants in here. This is how we're going to figure out how many plants we can put in here. We don't have any plants in there. Let's say we stock 30 plants. Let's say we put 30 plants inside of the system and they grow to maturity. And then we check the nitrate level again and boom, it's at 10 parts per million. Now we know what we've pretty much correctly stocked our system. Now we know how many plants we have. Okay. If I have this many fish and I'm feeding them at this ratio, now I know that I can put 30 plants in here and I can still have some nitrate level. And you want to know, you want to have some nitrate level showing so you know that you're not over or understocked. That's going to tell you right there if you're over or understocked as far as the plants, the plant portion goes. Now, if we put the 30 plants in the system and then we still had 100 parts per million nitrates left, we know, okay, I can stock more densely and um, the, 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 the system will be able to support it. Simple as that. And then, so, so from there, now you can take your notes. You can say, okay, 10 pounds of fish per 100 gallons of uh, water. Um, I have the biological surface area is 500 square feet. I'm putting in 1.5% feed, 1.5% 1. 1. 1. of the body weight of the fish in feed. Um, I have three, at least three milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen, and I have 30 plants. So the standard equation comes out to the fish's weight per the amount of gallons you have, plus the biological surface area, plus the feed percentage, plus dissolved oxygen levels, plus the amount of plants. This is what's going to give you how you stock your system. This is going to be how you stock your system. And now you can go ahead and be a biscuit headed aquaponist if you want. And I'm not talking to you specifically, but anyone out there, there's a lot of people that just want to be biscuit headed aquaponists and they want to stick to the one to two ratio. That's because that's just you know, I don't care. I want to stick to that. And that's just what I heard. That's what I learned. It's the simplest thing for me. Well, guess what happens? Let's say you want to stock, you, you want to be the biscuit headed aquaponist and you want to do one pound of fish per gallon. And then you want to have two media beds with the three quarter inch gravel. You have that. So you think you're rocking and rolling. Boom. 
then you're feeding at you're also feeding at you say oh i'm gonna i'll take your your advice on the 1.5 percent body weight that's no problem for me i can do that so you're doing that you have it stocked you have a high density stocking and then you're feeding at this rate and what's going to happen is when you're feeding the fish there's not going to be enough biological surface area inside of those two grow beds to support the, the amount of ammonia coming out of that one gallon, uh, one pound of fish per gallon. So your nitrate levels are going to, not your ammonia levels are going to spike. Nitrite levels are going to spike. Nitrate is through the roof. And what are you going to do next? You're either going to lower your feed amount. You're either going to add more grow beds or you're going to start removing fish. So you just basically did the same calculation that we just went through but you did it the hard way. You start uh, subtracting fish. You started lowering the feed rate because your calculations weren't right off of just basing it off of a one to one or one to two or one to three grow bread ratio. They weren't right. So you had to start doing some type of, uh, uh, um, you had to start doing some type of um, modifications in order to get the balance right inside of your system. So this is the way that you prevent it just by doing it right. Just by finding out, doing the right calculations first finding out, knowing exactly what you're going to be putting in the system. And that'll give you an educated estimate on how much you can expect out of your system.